Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious efforts so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about the Empowered Wife Workshop. My guest, Lainey, was co-living with her husband, who slept on the couch in the basement while she focused on their kids. But when he confessed that he had made a mistake, her blood ran cold. Then she made a mind-blowing discovery. And today her marriage feels light and her kids have their dad back. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. But first, let's talk about the Empowered Wife Workshop because I have super exciting news to tell you, especially if you're in Australia or New Zealand or if you're dreaming of visiting there but I'm getting ahead of myself. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, then you already know that the fastest way to get a playful, passionate marriage, no matter how hopeless it seems, is to learn and practice the six intimacy skills, ideally along with the connection framework. That's how to become empowered in all your relationships and also how to become comfortable, dignified, and happy in your own skin. I first started teaching the intimacy skills to women in my living room. And when there were too many of us to fit in my living room, I started offering workshops at hotel meeting rooms and community centers and conference centers and churches and a mosque a few times all over the United States. And women came from all over, often traveling a long, long way just to be there at these in-person events. They'd bring their dog-eared, highlighted copies of my book and tell me they saw themselves in the book and they just needed some help implementing the intimacy skills. The workshops would sell out and we'd have standing room only. I taught lots of workshops, but there were always more women who wanted to come. And I realized I needed to train coaches to teach those workshops too. I couldn't do it all myself. Today, there are well over a hundred coaches who lead Empowered Wife workshops all over the world. Um, Some are online, some are in person. So they are spreading that magic a lot faster and further than I ever could. And that is a preview about the exciting news I'm going to share with you shortly. The material and the exercises we do together in these workshops creates an incredible genuine connection among all of us. It's hard to describe, but it's a lot like running into old good friends that you haven't seen in a long time. And at the heart of the workshop is the six intimacy skills. When you participate in an Empowered Wife workshop, you'll be uncovering your true desires and practicing expressing them in a way that inspires so you can trigger your husband's hero gene. You learn phrases that create emotional safety and inspire him to want to open up and share and have deep conversations with you. You also experiment with taking the actions that make you into an irresistible magnet and the behaviors that lead to receiving more gifts, compliments, help, special treatment, and apologies. Participating in an Empowered Wife workshop feels really good because it's joyful to uncover your desires and learn to be a great listener and an irresistible magnet. And it also feels good to connect so deeply with other women who are invested in becoming their best selves so they can have their best relationship. There's something very nourishing about being in a room full of women who are attracted to these practices, who want the best marriage and the best family, and they want to be empowered. When empowered wives gather in person, something magical happens, and that magic follows them home and spreads to their whole families. The Empowered Wife Workshop has been rocking and rolling for over 20 years now. 10 years ago, my coaches and I decided to offer an extended workshop over the weekend where we would not only learn and practice all the intimacy skills, we would expand on the self-care aspect of the learning by incorporating a lot of fun stuff. 
Um, since that's the indispensable first step to having a great marriage, making yourself happy, the weekend version of the Empowered Wife Workshop included a dance party and food and games and some group singing and time by the pool. It's called the Cherished for Life Weekend. And it includes a man panel on Saturday where regular guys go on stage and bravely answer any question about relationships from the audience. Any question. Women have flown from all over the world to be a part of the Cherish for Life weekend. And we had standing room only again. So we offered another even bigger one and that one sold out too. And same with the next one. And that was years ago, and there hasn't been a Cherished for Life weekend since. That's one of the reasons I'm so excited to announce that my Laura Doyle certified coaches are not only having an in-person one day Empowered Wife workshop in Auckland, New Zealand on May 16th, 2023, they are also having a full-blown Cherish for Life weekend near Gold Coast, Australia from May 19th through 21st, 2023. And there's only room for 100 students at the Cherish for Life weekend and 50 students at the One Day Empowered Wife Workshop, and they will likely sell out. For all the juicy details about these events and future workshops, go to lauradoyle.org slash workshops. If you want to be able to sit instead of standing, reserve your seat today. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest Lainey was co-living with her husband who slept on the couch in the basement while she focused on their kids. But when he confessed he had made a mistake, her blood ran cold. Then she made a mind-blowing discovery and today her marriage feels light and her kids have their dad back. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. Lainey, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on, sharing your story with us. Thank you for having me. What were things like in the bad old days in your marriage? Um, well, I can say we had a lot of good. Um, there was no no fighting. We're not fighting people. Um, there's no arguing, uh, no nitpicking, you know, a lot of things that really inspire arguments in relationships or the crumbling of relationships. Um, but we were just distant. We lived um, two separate lives. I'm a goer, I'm constantly moving. I always have my kids and our kids, not mine, but um, they really were my kids at the time. Um, for the first eight years of our marriage, they were my kids and um, work was his lane. Uh, this really happened when I started working from home. Um, I took on all of the responsibilities. I mean, it, you could just really equate it to like a 1950s, 1940s marriage. You know, everything that had to do with the home or the children or um, care, it just really landed on my shoulders. And um, that was okay because independence was such a, a thriving point for me. Um, I had... I had had many situations in life where I, I had to depend on myself. Um, so being able to thrive on my own was fine. Um, I, I felt like I was, I was mastering it and I, I, I really was the best wife. Uh, so I, I took care of everything, took care of anything that could possibly be taken care of. And he took care of all the bills and he took care of all of the you know, financial things and those things. And, and I felt that I, I, I always owed him and, and he never said it. There was no control in that aspect, but as, as a 
you know, as a, you know, like two parts to a marriage, I wanted to hold up my end. Um, so I was always striving to just do everything. And I was exhausted and it was emotional and, and, and we had no connection. Um, we have a, we kind of have a bunch of kids and people equated that to like a great sex life. And really, um, I, I was like, oh, well, we're more of like a right day type couple. <laughs> like we just, we hit the mark each time, which was so funny because, I mean, we had just, uh, our sex was great. It just wasn't, um, you know, like the intimacy just wasn't there. Um, we just really were two separate people. And like you said, he, he He lived in the basement and that happened when we had our, I came into the marriage with one child. So that happened when when I had my second child and I had so much anxiety about him being woken up throughout the night because he had to go to work. Um, So I just, it kind of was almost like a suggestion on my part that he sleep um, on the couch. And and in my head, this was just going to make it easier for me because the baby could wake up as many times and I, I didn't have to worry. You know, so, so I like, I like started this. It's so terrible. Um, so he started sleeping on the couch and, um, we had another child and another child and he just never moved back in. And, and that's so funny because in a marriage, you don't like move out and back in, but he just never moved back in and, and he would come to bed and we would be intimate and he would go back to the couch. He, he wouldn't stay and I didn't know how to make him stay. So this, this funny thing happened for like, for basically the past eight years where about every three to four months, I would have this really awful meltdown where I would beg for attention and tell him I needed more. And so we didn't have constant fights, but I kind of was like this passive aggressive attack <laughs> that I kept doing, um, begging for attention. Um, so we were at about the 10 year mark and it was in the, the heat of COVID. And um, I, I was just living my best life. I, I had my kids home, I was homeschooling. I could spend all of my time running through the woods and through the parks and at the lake and, he has a job that takes him away a lot. So this is also where independence was so great. You know, I could take care of all the things, but I had really created a, a, a life that my kids and I lived and my husband would just kind of pop into and pop out of. And with that being said, I, I just wanted him to be able to pop in seamlessly and pop out seamlessly where it didn't affect my kids. I, I couldn't have them constantly missing him, constantly looking for him. So in my head, I had just created the perfect little nest. These children were all very secure. They knew that dad would be in and out. And, and I didn't want him to have to parent really hard. I didn't want to have to discipline. I wanted him to be the fun parent. So, right, don't I just sound like the perfect wife? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So, so this is all going on. And I, I think, you know, and he's, he's gone. And when he's home, this is, this is the weird thing is when he would be home with us, we'd finally have him home and the kids would start acting up. So I would leave with them. I would, I would be like, yeah, we'll just, we'll head off to the park. You know, let's go for a walk. <laughs> let's go pick anything, strawberry, something, let's, let's go to anything else other than have to create this situation where, where dad's going to have to either be angry or discipline. I just didn't want them to cause a ruckus. I didn't want them to. So, so I was just constantly intervening, I was constantly intervening. So we're in, in the thick of COVID and it's just before our anniversary and um, I had gotten back from a camping trip with my kids. We had gone on a, on a fall camping trip. It was chilly and wonderful. And um, we got home and I was so excited to tell my husband all about it. And he was home and he came in the kitchen and he said to me, um, I made a mistake. 
And um, now I had been insecure for, through our, our marriage just because I kind of always felt like I married up, like I married a 10, <laughs> which I think we all think that, right? Um, so in my head, I married a 10. So I kind of always was really, really self-conscious and that, that he could, could just find someone at any point. So he comes to me with this, this um, just explosion of information that um, it just dropped the, the ground right out from underneath me. Um, I just remember standing in the kitchen and like, I felt like my blood ran cold as he told me he had been having an affair. Oh. <laughs> and that was... It was weird because I never thought divorce, but I didn't know how to go forward. And the most, um, like the most daunting part about this is, um, this is the second husband uh, that has had an affair on me. So my first husband also had uh, multiple affairs. Um, so this one, this marriage was was a security. Um, my husband was amazingly committed even though with all my insecurities, he really built me up all the time. And um, I just won't let him. I just, I was sure it was going to happen. And, and then it did. So what, what steps do you take from there? Um, And, and I don't do things in your conventional way. So I had read a book called um, the same kind of different as me. And in this book, the same kind of situation happened and the husband called the other person or no, the wife called the other girl and said, if my husband ever reaches out to you again, I won't fight you for him. You can have him. But as of today, we're going to work on our marriage and I want you to know that. So I did this. I did this. I told myself, this is what I was going to do. If it ever happened again, when I read this book, I told myself if it ever happened, I was going to call her and tell her, tell her this. So I did. And she was surprisingly receptive to me. And she said, you know, I'm, we're going to work on our marriage too. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you to try to take them again. Yeah. It's just, you work on yours and I'll work on mine. And had I had the skills, I, I maybe would have stopped there. But I didn't. I didn't. I made so many bad choices, Laura. Oh, my gosh. You didn't know. You didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I dug for pain everywhere possible. I wanted every detail. I wanted every detail to the point where I started talking to her husband to get more details. Bad, bad, bad. I listened to one of your podcasts and in there, the woman said, whatever you find out when you dig for pain, you have to heal from Oh my gosh, I bet you would have heard that so much earlier because there's so much I wish I didn't know. There's mm-hmm. so many betrayals I wish I never had to heal, heal, heal from, and now I have to. So okay. um, I went for about six months just trying to dig up every bit of pain. Uh, and my husband still didn't move into the bedroom. He stayed on the couch. Nothing changed. Nothing changed other than we had to talk every night about this. Mm-hmm. We never found in front of our kids. We never told anybody. I had nobody to confide in except mm-hmm. um, my aunt. Um, I reached out to our church. They had nobody that I could talk to. Nobody had dealt with it. Nobody had tried to move forward from it. Um, anybody I I I had one woman who did pray over me and she said she had gone through the same thing. And I said, well, how did you make it out? And she said, I didn't. I just left it. Oh, (laughs) you cannot offer me anything if you don't, if you've never even tried. So Mm -hmm. just in this moment, I just, um, I just knew I had to find the right people. And that's why I couldn't tell anyone because anybody who knew me knew I had already gone through it and they would have told me to run. Mm. They would have, um, they would have offered out. They would have helped me get out, but I don't want any help getting out. I I just, 
I just wanted to help sustain. <laughs> so your choices were to be completely isolated and alone and lonely with this. Mm, it is the loneliest place to be. Shameful secret in a way. And then, or to get help out. And there was yeah, no and then, other choice that y- you could see. And I think the most shameful part about it is um, as much as I want, uh, I wanted this to just be my husband and like, he's the devil and terrible and awful. And, yes. and how could yes. he do this to me? And I'm the victim. And right. um, I was the common factor. I was the oh. common factor in both marriages. And, and this one, this one might not work too. And, and, and the only way it could as if you change the common factor and that is me. <laughs> so darn that accountability um, that you had though. That's uh, extraordinary. Well, it's, it's like painful, painful accountability. So painful to so, like, like a tsunami of pain. Right. And it's all in your hands. Oh my goodness. No. I mean, it was yeah. just really, really a lot to swallow. Definitely. So I was after a, a probably a four hour conversation and a long walk in the dark. And I just looked up, what do you do in, if your husband is cheating and he doesn't want to be with you anymore? How do you change that? Um, how do you make, how do you fix it? How do you make it work? And uh, your podcast popped up and I, I didn't know where to start. I, uh, they just, yeah, obviously there's a lot of them. So, yeah. um, I started with, uh, how to be a ridiculously happy wife parts one and two. And, um, but since then I've listened to every single one and read every single book, <laughs> but, um, I started with those two and in there I talked about a smile campaign and I was desperate. I was just, I was sure it was not going to work, but the skills that were talked about just sounded so silly to me. So I picked the easiest one and that was to smile. And I was like, I can smile. Right. That's fine. So I started smiling and, uh, and then from smiling uh, one night, he just cleaned up after supper and back to our 1950s marriage. This wasn't normal. Um, the kitchen's my, my area. Yeah. So uh, then I was just really surprised. I just said, thank you. And I just let it be. I was like, I don't know. I don't know what is going on. Um, and then um, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I could try it. The one other one was to stop and greet them. Greet your husband when he gets home uh, with no complaints. Because <laughs> that was a lot. A lot of times he'd just walk in and I'd want to throw the kids at him. Mm-hmm. Um, but so he... I started just stopping what I was doing and uh, greeting him when he'd walk in the door. And then more things started happening. Um, Just little things, you know, like a hug randomly. Um, And and we don't do that a lot. Uh, Folding up blankets or, you know, just little things around the house. And I thought, what is going on? What is going on? This is not even my sense. I did two things. I did two things. All I did, smiled and started saying hi to him when he walked in the door. And I just greet him at the door. And then um, out of nowhere, one of my children walked up to me and they said, mom, dad is so happy when he gets home now. And I was looking at them and I'm like, dad's always happy when he gets home. No, no, he's not. Um, you started being happy when he gets home and oh. now he's happy to see us all. And that one was hard. <laughs> that one I had to, um, leave the room for. Cause that's a lot. Yeah. You're busted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot on me then. So. Wow. I didn't stop there. <laughs> I mean, little things were changing. Why would you quit? Right. So um, I learned hard. So I thought I'll just, oh, I, I can't do the I can't one because 
I can literally do anything, right? Anything yeah. and everything I can, I mean, I will muscle up and make it happen. That's Doesn't right. Matter. Yeah. Um, and then I'm driving home and it's winter. We live where there's winter, like cold winter. So um, I put my window down at an ATM and all of a sudden there's this huge pop in the door and it won't go back up. Oh. It won't go back up. And I have to drive like 20 some miles home. Oh. And I, um, it won't go back up. And it's over 20 miles home and it's 10 degrees. I have oh. all the children with me. <gasps> oh. <laughs> it was a slow, cold ride. Thankfully, we all had our winter clothes on and everybody was fine. It wasn't windy. Um, but we got home and I had to use, I can't. I had to go to him and say something happened to the van window and I can't fix it. And he says, you can't. And I thought he was going to be so angry with me that I broke something. And I said, I can't fix it. And he jumped up. He went outside. He moved my vehicle into the garage and he started working on it. And I didn't know what to do, Laura. I had no idea what to do. I was so baffled that this is how this happened because in my head, I would have just needed to take care of it. Um, so I didn't know what to do. And I just, I just sat down on the couch and I just, I just fell asleep. But I don't know. I was like panicky. I don't know. I, and I fell asleep. I never nap ever, ever. And um, I woke up and he had the whole door taken apart, but all my kids were watching a movie and supper was started. I don't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I hadn't, I, so I just started taking over. I jumped right back into my, the way I am and I uh, started cooking, cleaning and feeding them. And, um, and he went back to, to the garage and continued working on the vehicle. And, and it was just so weird because he, he didn't let them wake me up and he had supper going and oh. I just was so amazed. I just, oh, it was crazy. And that seems like such a small win, but oh, no. it just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't, it was so big to me because, because this is, this is what I've been looking for. It's what I've been needing. And I thought that I needed more uh, compliments and things like that. But this, this um, doing these little things for me, it just, it filled me right up, mm. filled me right up. So um, after I did the, I can't, I, I started using uh, whatever you think. And can I pick your brain? Um, we have an older child who is a teenager and I, I struggle because I, I will argue, I will argue with a teenager. I will argue my point and try to be right. And, um, I was going through this rigmarole with my, with our oldest. And, um, I just looked at my husband and I said, what, what do you think? Like, what, what do you think about this? What should we do? And he said, well, why don't you let me talk to them? and I was like oh no I I don't think that's what I want I just wanted <laughs> you to tell me what to, I don't actually want you to do it because you might do it wrong yeah exactly right and I don't have any control over it and um so I I had to take a step back and this was the first time I really let him actually just just take it and go and then um he just started doing more and more with our older ones. And, um, and then he's, he started going to practices uh, with our kids and he started doing stuff in the yard with them and playing sports with them. And, oh my gosh, in episode 115, when she says, I gave my kids their dad back. Mm. That is the biggest win out of this entire thing. I get to keep my husband, but my kids got their dad back. 
I have like a, like a FOMO, the fear of being left out that thing, right? I think that's what it's called. But um, I always want to be part of it. So all the fun they're having, I want to be part of it and getting to just let go of that and let him just be a dad. Giving them their dad back has altered every single one of my children for the better. They, in every aspect, they have both of us. We both inspire them. And getting to just say to my boys, I hope that's your goal. Like dad is the best role model and wanting my girls to find somebody like him, like, and being able to pour that into my husband with gratitude. He just keeps doing more. I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, the, the bed's made and the living room's cleaned up, the cars are taken care of. And these, these are not diamond rings and they're not new houses and they're not trips. And a lot of the stories I hear, those are things that happen, but I didn't need that. I just want a family and I got it back. So that doesn't mean that um, fear left. Uh, I think that's been one thing that has stuck with me is the fear that it'll happen again. Um, so that's where um, the spouse fulfilling prophecy comes in a lot and uh, faith over fear. <laughs> I have to do a lot of faith over fear. And um, I don't want to say it's a daily occurrence, but if I look for pain, I will find it. If I look for cues or clues or he could be, I'll find it. Um, and I think that's one thing that you talk about that uh, that needless emotional turmoil and and that l- looking for pain and debate. If I can, if I can just tell myself he's just baiting you. <laughs> don't play with him. Mm-hmm. Like don't play the game. Just stay out of it. Or If I can say to myself, he chose you, he's here, he took care of this, he is part of your family. If that's what you want, then you have to stay focused. Stay focused on the faith. Keep having faith in him. Um, And it's, it is a daily thing, but it it gets better. It gets better. I, I mean, we're, we're two years past it now. Um, I've been working the skills for about a year and a half and I am more confident. I am more calm. I am more focused on everything. Um, But really we got our dad back. So So exciting. And um, I mean, how, how has it impacted your kids? to have their dad back? I just think that um, they all, they all had me. And because I had created that world where they didn't miss him, they didn't have to miss him because we didn't, we were never connected enough to him to need him with us. Um, But he was gone for, this is a funny story. this summer or this past summer, he was gone for about a month and um, we weren't even three days in and they're asking when he's coming back. My kids have never asked when he'll be home. They've never uh, talked about missing him. Um, And that's how, that's how much of a world I created that didn't include my husband. Um, So the uh, bringing up if dad was here he would say this if if this was here he would you know he would say this or oh my gosh I can't wait to tell dad and dad will be home in nine days you know the countdown and I just told my husband I said I've never seen them miss you like this and I couldn't be happier yes I have to calm them and um you know cope with them that you're gone but what a wonderful thing to have to work through. 
And what been an insane thing that I thought the independence from him was our strength. Mm. And now just seeing like how much strength we have in missing him and getting in to miss him together. That's so beautiful. That was, it was huge, huge uh, impact on our kids. And, and to have him now, uh, you know, at their practices and at their games and coaching some things, he's fully integrated into their lives. Wow. And before, I didn't let him. I, I mean, I would be like, you should come to the game. But you're not going to come to the game. You're ser- It's their only game this week. You're not going to come, you know, and, and kind of try to guilt him into it. And I would just use all of the skills that I thought I had, you know, the guilt and, you know, control. I, I never thought I was controlling because I never told him what to do, but I always walked. I had this control of walking on eggshells where he never knew if I was okay. So he was like always avoiding having to deal with me. Like, is it close to her three month breakdown? Oh, you your clock like- by it. Yeah. Yes, it was clockwork, clockwork for me spiraling into this e- event of, of a state of the union type thing. Um, but how long is it? How long has it been since you've had that breakdown? Actually, I would have to say that's kind of when I realized like this is working because I had made it, I think, eight months without having a breakdown and I couldn't figure out why I didn't get a single new compliment I didn't get you know there was no more compliments there was no more um intimacy was growing but he wasn't a verb he he wasn't verbal about it you know it wasn't like you look good or anything like that that our relationship was changing that way which is what I thought I needed but he was just filling me up in little ways. Like I didn't realize that having the window on a vehicle fixed was going to make me feel loved, but that that's an easy way for him to show love because he, he could fix it. Yeah. And there's just these, these little things. And I also had to notice that he expressed his compliments in different ways than I maybe wanted to receive them. So being receptive is another thing I really learned through the skills because I, I didn't receive well. If he said something nice to me, I was like, no, yeah. probably not. Uh, one really funny one is I was wearing gray leggings and he's like, Oh, I like these. And I said, they're not nearly as nice as the black ones, but okay. <laughs> why why would I say that and and he said fine <laughs> don't I'm like fine I guess then the black ones are better okay <laughs> and he just left the room just left the room oh, uh, but I did I know that. that I I don't receive well anywhere I don't receive well from anyone not compliments not anything um so the skills taught me that to do that everywhere um, not just with my husband, but across the board, when people give, receive it, uh, take it with you. And if you don't agree with it, just, sh- just shut <laughs> and take it anyways. <laughs> so, and this has been a pain point that he wasn't very verbally, uh, he's not effusive, yes. right? He wasn't giving you many compliments, right? but you kind of also were able to track it back to like, Oh, when I, when he did compliment my leggings. Oh, yes. I'm yeah, not good at taking it. No it. wonder he doesn't. No wonder he doesn't want to give them to me. If yeah. every time he says something, I'm like, no, maybe yeah. we should argue about that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you I'm not that great. Yeah. So right? Silly. Right? right. Yeah. No. What a great awareness though. That's a, that's a big breakthrough. Right. Cause I think you yeah. can feel really uncomfortable to receive. Yes. And I didn't realize I was making him uncomfortable. I just thought he should do it more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause he was a hundred percent the problem. I was the perfect wife and all he yeah. had to do was show up and do the things I said. 
Exactly. But I'm not controlling, but I'm so, so controlling. Oh <laughs> my goodness. It's humiliating, really. <laughs> I, I mean, relate. I just walked around thinking I was the best wife. Right, right. Yeah, and me all too. All I had to do was just be nice and tell me nice things. And you told them you had it pretty that. easy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How hard could it be? Yeah. This shouldn't be that hard. What's wrong with you? Um, but seeing how I really altered the relationship and how resistant I was and the control I needed for my independence um, was so eye opening. Uh, it took so many steps back to move forward to, you know, to heal myself, to be able to just really commit to the skills. And I tried um, just doing a couple skills and thinking, well, these two made a few changes. So that should probably be enough. I think we're good. Um, yeah. And, and the minute I stop a skill, I can just see us going back to the way it was. I I'll start thinking, well, Maybe I should question that or, you know, or complain or, um, and, and just little things irk me differently. If I, especially if I'm not like, if I'm not working on my self-care, if I'm not working on my self-care, I notice everything. I notice Mm -hmm. everything. If I focus on my, my own self-care and just little things like, um, I like coffee in the morning. So I get up early and have coffee by myself. Um, If I miss that or my routine is way off or I can't get to the gym or those are just the things that keep me sane every day. And he never, ever has said, don't do them. But I I always felt like, like if I put time into myself, you know, being a mother, if I put time into myself, I was taken away from somebody else. Um, So I just, self-care was so mind-blowing to me and I it was the hardest one for me to do and it was the last one I was willing to try (laughs) (laughs) yeah definitely put that on the back burner as long as possible I think you're Um, not alone with that yeah (laughs) with a bunch of kids it's hard to find time for yourself so it, it was a lot easier to focus on them and focus on him and the control and keeping everything intact Uh, that putting time into me was just really hard. So when I started the skills and each one started adding to my marriage and to my family, once I got to that last one, once I could break through that, oh, it's just like a a breath of fresh air. (laughs) The, The lightness of not having to constantly check and look in find and being able to just nap if I wanted to uh and not you nap now? Was, uh, sometimes yeah oh, wow every once in a while uh I took a new job and I uh, I did I did start napping once in a while just to refresh because sometimes I like to be a night owl but I really want to be up by five <laughs> it's hard to do both it's really contradictory because yeah. it, it really makes me tired. And if I'm tired, I really can see the things. Yeah. I really can notice the things because the minute I, I'm not filled up, I'm looking for a way to be um, angry or I don't know, deceived or something. There, there has to be something going on. If I haven't slept, then I'm just like, something has to be going on. That's There's when there has the... to be some pain point coming. Yeah. Yeah. It so makes it's sense. important that I fill myself up and, and that's getting easier and easier. And my kids are, are letting me and my husband's just letting me. And it's so crazy. I don't, I can't even imagine five years ago, ever thinking, you know, I think I could use a nap and then taking one. Wow. Never, <laughs> never. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, as an alternative to having all the monsters under the bed, right? Of thinking like there's right. something I need to look for, or there's you know, there's something wrong here and I've got to go figure out what it is and try to put it right by focusing yes. on it. Which and I should say he yeah. um he's completely moved back in the bedroom. Oh <laughs> um 
but it didn't happen until I found the skills. I, I wasn't, I would beg and beg and beg and beg for him to, to move back in or to sleep by me or, and because he had uh, confided in me about the infidelity, um, I think he just didn't know what to do next. He just wanted to do it right. He didn't want to touch me if I didn't want to be touched. He didn't want to um, pressure me into something I wasn't ready for, whether that be being intimate or whichever. Um, and he wasn't really sure how I, I felt about intimacy with him uh, after it all. And all I wanted was intimacy. Mm-hmm. That's all I wanted. I just I, Every possible way I wanted him to just prove to me he chose me. Mm-hmm. Um, and but he didn't know what to do. And as much as I was like begging and yelling for him to move into the bedroom, it just wasn't on the table. Uh, oh. That For that first six months, nothing really changed in that area. And I started the skills and I, I started working them. And within a month and a half, he moved back in the bedroom and he's been there ever since. Wow. So wow, amazing. really good things. Yeah, this is There's something so amazing about waking up to your husband every morning. And, and I give him gratitude about that all the time. Um, Just the security in how he makes me feel safe. And um, every morning I wake up next to him, it's just like this big safety net that he caught me again. Amazing. This is uh, so such a a thing to celebrate. You know, I just want to, I just want to do my happy dance because (laughs) what this was a big breakdown. This was a tsunami of pain for you. This, um, him confessing his, uh, his affair and you not only were able to, to go forward and fix your whole family. So your kids got their dad back. You wake up feeling good and strong and happy next to this man every day. Yeah. I mean, who, who thought that ending was coming to this story? Not me. I'm actually so committed to this program that I called my ex-husband's wife so she could work on her marriage too. Um, my first husband was a hard human uh, to love and whatever. And um, they were, I don't want to say they were going through uh, issues, but they, um, I don't know how much of his lifestyle changed with her. And she had had a conversation with me and I called her after I really seen success in my own marriage. And I just called her and I said, um, you gotta have this book. <laughs> you gotta start this. And, uh, she was really excited and I have never checked in to see if she did or not, but I hope that it inspired her marriage too. Um, I need, I, not that I need, but I really hope that their marriage is another because they have an impact on my son or my oldest in how he sees marriage. And I just explained to her that I want them to have the strongest marriage they can have because they're also showing my kid what marriage looks like. And if it's in shambles or in arguments, it's not doing the future any good. It's not doing their kids any good. It's not doing my kid any good. And all I want to do is for them to pour good marriages back into the world and to make it. I want, I want every marriage to make it. So if theirs can make it too, that would be amazing. Yeah. So I just think about that woman that prayed over you and then said, Oh yeah, I left. And I'm just thinking Mm -hmm. about if someone was to say, to you, hey, this happened in my marriage, uh, you'd be able to pray over them and say, I fixed it, right? And be that beacon of hope yes. for what's possible, which must feel amazing. Yes. What an it's, accomplishment. It's on my heart to coach. I just am not there yet. I got to learn more. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I hear it. I hear it. I mean, either way, you're helping to end world divorce you started with your own of course but one at a time (laughs) and you're sharing a story right this is a story we where else in the world do you get to hear the inside of a story like this that you're sharing so personally right so vulnerably with us about what really went on at your house so it's i i know 
uh, someone's listening and that her marriage is gaining hope from hearing your story and all that's possible, seeing that, you know, wanting to walk down that same path. So it's pretty incredible. I hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what is your tip for that for someone who's listening and his, maybe her husband's just told her, Hey, I made a mistake. Like, what should she do? Well, I think all of us say, find you. (laughs) But um, the one thing that I felt was the most impactful for me was to realize that um, I needed to surround people with, or surround myself with people who supported me. I think you can, you can find friends that support you and the you of getting out, the the, the demise of your marriage. Um, And it's just really important to find somebody who, who is for your marriage and for your husband, for you, for your kids and for the unity of you. Um, I know that if I had surrounded myself with the wrong people, I would have had so much support to leave. Mm -hmm. And if I had had all that support in those first six months, I might've, I might've had enough persuasion and, and I would have vented and I would have had all of the bad out on other people to help persuade me to leave. But I didn't, I didn't confide in anybody except one person who I felt was going to support me in staying. Um, So that I just think it is so important. And that's why I think the community is so important um, to stand behind you in making good decisions and sticking with the skills and they're fighting for your marriage, not against it. Yeah. They're standing for you, for your greatness, but for your husband's greatness too. And when you're mad, you the support to say, run, do it, I'll help. Ah. You're like, sounds yeah. might sound really appealing, you know, women unite or whatever. Um, but the women unite to save your marriage is so much more important. It, it is so detrimental to keeping your family together. And if that's what you want, this is the place to be these are the women you want surrounding you on circle on all of the areas that you can reach people in emails in podcasts and books uh surround yourself with the ones who are fighting for your marriage i'm here to fight with you yeah yeah (laughs) you are you are yeah you're part of that uh, part of our community our amazing community that attracts uh incredibly courageous committed women like you who think marriage is important and and standing for your marriage fighting for your marriage is important because the world depends on strong families and that's that's how we get them is through um women like you who make these uh courageous decisions to have a smile camp campaign and practice self-care and use baby spouse steps. fulfilling prophecies. Yeah. 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 Baby steps. It's all, it's, that's all you need, right? It's baby steps. And it really and, is just one little good choice at a time. One yeah. choice. Yeah. Each moment you get to make that choice to just duct tape or yeah. Yeah, take that yeah. moment for yourself. You, you get to, and if you do Oh, you just keep building. You just keep building momentum to good. It's so amazing. And you get to stand on the mountaintop and say, oh, I did it. <laughs> Here we are. Hands up, screaming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> right? I mean, why wouldn't we? It, yeah. It's such a, it's a, it's a high, it's a wonderful, it, it's a wonderful accomplishment. It's, it's but it's, you described it beautifully. When we were talking about waking up to your husband, just that um, there's a joy and a contentment and a sweetness to, um, creating the marriage that you dreamed you would have when you stood at the altar and said, I do. Uh, yeah. And I, uh, and every marriage has room for improvement, of course, but um, including mine, but I, uh, but pretty, pretty darn good, right. To live here instead yeah. of where we were before. Oh, and, so much better. Yes. Yeah. What, what do you think you would say if you could go back and talk to Lainey, knowing what you know now, what, what would you say to her? First, I would say you won't learn till you're ready. 
it has to be for some reason I have to learn when it's when it when I'm ready I I uh I would have loved to learn these skills I don't know 15 20 years ago but then I wouldn't be here so <laughs> I'm glad I'm learning them now I'm I'm I so one would be you learn when you're ready and two would be and I wouldn't listen to this but goodness if I could just tell myself I'm the problem (laughs) and just be able to just fix me um instead of constantly putting it on somebody else or and I don't want to say I'm like a victim but I could always find a way that my husband could just do better and how how horrible to have somebody standing there telling you always that you could do better um and weird he never once told me I could do better he never did that to me, but I did it to him all the time, which is so hard to swallow also. But um, if I could have looked inside and I, I mean, I always wanted to improve, but if I could have looked inside and realized the impact I had on my own marriage earlier, I think I, I think I would have been able to change things, but back to, I learn when I'm ready. I now know, and I get to do it, but be ready to learn when it's coming. <laughs> yeah. The learning I mean, is coming. It is such a hard thing. It would, I know. I, I mean, I, I, I still remember like how I felt when I realized I would, oh, it was me. I was the problem. And it's an oh, awful it's feeling. It's a horrible feeling. But it's also filled with hope, I think. Yes. There's because when it's in your hands, you get to make the sh- you get to yeah, like, the oh, I'm driving this car, I'm driving this hot dog truck, so maybe I can yeah. drive us out of the ditch or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, you could drive right out of this ditch. Yeah, into greatness. Yeah, and you did, and you did. So, uh, so it's an incredible story. Yeah, congratulations to you and Thank to you. all your children. You have five children. You said we do. Yeah, yeah five A children. Bunch. So seven lives have been. Uh, impacted. Yeah. The, yeah. It's just, there's a, such a strong family where there was um, so much, I guess, uh, as you said, needless emotional turmoil um, previously. And I just am really inspired and uh, moved to hear about all that you accomplished and so grateful that you shared it with us so authentically today. Thank you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll share the top three reasons there's no passion in your marriage. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that the Empowered Wife podcast has been downloaded over two and a half million times. That means you've been listening and sharing it with women you know who want to have shiny, amazing marriages too. And I am so grateful to you. Thanks for being such a vital part of the mission to end world divorce.